We introduce virtual occlusions through implicit depth, a new approach for accurately estimating scene occlusions for augmented reality applications. The goal of this work is to create convincing and compelling augmented reality effects by inserting virtual objects into images and videos such that they are accurately occluded by real-world objects. To do so, we frame the task as a binary segmentation problem and directly predict an occlusion mask, taking as input RGB images and a rendered depth map of virtual assets in the current camera. This is in contrast to conventional approaches, where a full depth map is estimated and compared pixel-wise with the known depth of the virtual asset. For immersive experiences, occlusions must not only be accurate, but also stable between frames. By posing the problem as binary segmentation, we can efficiently enforce temporal consistency in our predictions with minimal computational overhead. Code is available from our project website. For more details, please consult the paper or continue watching as we will discuss the method in more depth. In order to create convincing and compelling augmented reality experiences, it is important that virtual objects appear to be grounded in the real world, as viewed through the camera. Simply naively compositing virtual objects on top of the input image frames breaks this illusion, as the virtual assets do not respect the visibility and occlusion resulting from their interaction with the real objects in the scene. For believable augmented reality effects, the virtual objects should occlude and be occluded by real objects. Furthermore, the predicted occluding edges need to align with the real depth discontinuities in the scene, and the occlusion predictions need to be consistent across time, i.e. they should be stable and not flicker. The current most dominant approach for estimating occlusions consists of a two-stage pipeline. First, the depth of each pixel is regressed using a deep network that takes a single image or sequence of images as input. Then, the estimated depth of each pixel is compared to the known depth of the virtual object when placed in the scene. An occlusion mask is then computed, which allows the virtual object to be masked by any real occluders that are closer to the camera. In this work, we present a new approach for consistent virtual object occlusion estimation. Our approach bypasses the computation of explicit depth and instead directly targets the problem of interest, occlusion estimation. The key advantage of our approach is that the network no longer has to estimate the real value depth for each pixel and instead focuses on an easier binary decision. For a given pixel on the virtual object, we simply check if it is in front or behind the real scene. Our approach is enabled by several key contributions. We frame the problem of compositing a virtual object at a known depth into a real scene as a binary mask estimation problem. By effectively posing the problem as a segmentation task, we are able to efficiently enforce temporal consistency in our predictions with minimal additional computational overhead. Our lightweight MLP prediction head allows us to train a generic model without being constrained to knowing our test time AR assets ahead of time. We also introduce metrics for occlusion evaluation and find our method gives more accurate and visually pleasing virtual object compositing compared with alternative approaches. Let's look at some results. On the left, we see the results of the traditional depth regression based approach for occlusion estimation. If we pause, we can see that this approach fails to accurately capture the fine details of the occluding contours. As a result, we observe jagged and incorrect compositing, especially behind the foliage. In contrast, on the right, we see our approach. Notice that ours is able to correctly composite the R asset such that it is partially visible behind the leaves. Here we show another scene. Again on the left, we can see the regression baseline. This method struggles to predict an accurate occlusion mask, especially for the gaps in the chair. It is also very unstable, resulting in the asset flickering, rapidly appearing and disappearing, hurting the immersion of the AR experience. On the right, we show the results of our method. Notice that ours is far more stable and is able to correctly occlude the balloon frame to frame, even with rapid camera movements. Now we compare our method to the occlusions obtained via an AR kit LiDAR sensor. On the left, we show ARKit LiDAR, and on the right, we show our method. Notice that ours is far more stable, especially around the edges of the fountain. Surprisingly, our method performs well on moving objects, even though it has only been trained on static scenes. Although our approach does not directly predict depth, we can still use it to infer a depth map for any input image. By simply performing an efficient binary search at each pixel, we can estimate the scene depth. As we increase the number of binary tests we perform, we obtain more refined depth estimates. Here, we show the impact of training with and without our temporal stability contribution. 
With temporal stability turned on, predictions are far more stable across time. In the paper, we provide detailed quantitative evaluation on the ScanNet v2 dataset. We evaluate and compare our method to multiple recent baseline methods. Here, we present results on our occlusion task, where the goal is to predict accurate compositing masks for virtual objects in unseen test scenes. We evaluate our approach using several different monocular and multi-view architectures from the literature, where higher numbers are better. In all cases, we outperform the standard regression variants of these models. While our focus is on occlusion estimation, we can also evaluate our method on the task of depth estimation. We observe that our method obtains state-of-the-art performance. Finally, we show an interesting limitation of our method. Although our model is able to predict accurate and stable occlusion edges for this scene, it is unable to reason about transparent surfaces such as glass. This is due to the limitation of the available training data. Thank you for watching. Please see our main paper and supplementary PDF for detailed quantitative and qualitative results.